you've got all your seam sealer all completed it's all dry I left this overnight I started to put some uh, stone chip protector on but I ran out so the, the guy's just been with some for me now the stuff I'm using is this Proform PF560 you can get it in black white and beige I do believe I don't know why who wants to do beige but um, it's good stuff you must shake it really really well and when you're finished you must invert the can and blow some gas through it and then preferably take this take the nozzle off and put it in some uh, paint thinner because the problem with them is use it and it'll form little drippets around the the tip here and when you want to use it again it'll splatter so to get the maximum best finish keep these clean I know we all say it for paint cans you know oh, you must blow them out and stuff like that but we never do do we but uh, that's it now you can get another type that goes onto a Schultz gun this doesn't seem to be too popular nowadays um, it's mostly in cans and I think it's for the cleanup because it is like a plastic coating and once your gun gets gummed up with that type of stuff well it's a bloody nightmare to clean out so even I prefer to buy this it's a little bit more expensive it's a little bit more expensive but it's good stuff now you must shake it I mean again follow the instructions because if you don't you won't get the maximum results so like I say I've gone through the caulking uh, experience with this if you want to call it that and now I'm going to spray it and now I'm going to spray three light coats do not be tempted to spray a heavy coat because it will slow down drying because this dries really really quick but it can sag and that's what you don't want oh your boiler's turned off at last and this is how you put it on Try and get a nice even coat. Now I've put that, that's the first coat on there. Um, it will settle down and dry down really nice. But sometimes you can see bare metal through where it's missed. But it went, because it's shiny, you can't really see it. So I'm going to continue doing that. I'm going to do all this front in this. It is paintable. Don't be confused with the similar stuff that's undercoating which is tar based, asphalt based because if you put paint on top of that you're going to have a lot of fun this stuff's pretty good like I said don't put it on with a shovel because not only is it too thick and it wastes product and sagging but when a stone hits the paint it will chip the paint because it's like a, a rubber backing you only want it very thin so that if a stone hits it and hits the paint the stone bounces off if you see what I mean it, it seems backwards but it, it does work so I'm going to continue doing that and we'll have a look and see what it's like when we're finished so there's the bulkhead done the gravel guard's dried nice and you can see now it's on my painting frame that means I can get all the way around it if I wanted to paint it which I won't um, there was a few things I forgot because it's like 15 years ago since I did one of these last and uh, one of the things, well I'll show you when we go around the front, is that because I've got a, a bar going across the front to keep the, to keep the distance of the footwell correct, um, if I was going to do another frame again, which I won't, I would have put a bigger spacer in so I could get in with a welder to do these little inner f vertical pieces. I'll show you on the other side. Because I used to leave them to last till it was on the painting frame, then spot weld them, you know, uh, plug weld them, and put seam sealer on and then I could get all the way around it but I forgot that bit <laughs> well you do don't you but anyway no it's turned out quite, kind of nice um, I think in future YRM panels are the best panels to use they fit I'm not sure if these footwells are YRM because um, I haven't seen any of their stuff um, but at least it's got the reinforcement you know it's the pressing in the, the, the footwell itself to reinforce it 
Those cheapy brick part ones that's just a flat panel, oh God, they fit where they touch them things. Horrible. But uh, yeah, YRM do a, a door pillar that goes around, you know, from here. And that's the only bit we really need, you know, that's, that's, we don't need that top bit most of the time. Now, one thing I was going to say to you, and uh, I, meant, I forgot to mention it, when it comes to repairing these top corners, um, I'm not sure, I don't really follow, you know, everybody, every manufacturers and body panel makers, but back in my day, we couldn't buy that part. We had to fabricate everything. And it's a real pain because you're chasing rust back further and further and it's a real nasty point. I only took this one on because that piece was solid. Yeah, I know you can get front panels and stuff like this to cover over rust, but once rust is in, it's in. That's the problem. It's, it's, it's all in there. So I'm not sure if somebody will say in the comments, yes, why are I make that panel? I would have liked to have seen them make a full assembly for the top. So you could just cut this one off and weld it onto another one and job done. None of that messing about putting little patches in. Those Britpark corner pieces you can get for the, for the front here. You know, like on, that go on the outside. <laughs> They're a waste of time. You might as well use an old bloody Coca-Cola can. Now, once uh, this is my painting frame. So once I'd painted this, what I'd do the next is take it outside with a forklift, hang it upside down, and use um, fluid film, warm fluid film, and pour it into the door pillars. Well, I'm pointing out, I've got, I've got a camera up wrong around, there you go. I'd pour it into the door pillars and just let it run out. And it'll run out through here, through all the orifices, but that's where you want it. Would I use camera rust proofing? No, um, not particularly, because the fluid film will stick and it'll stay there. Um, crown rust proofing, like I say, it's good if you can get in and give it a squirt every now and again. It's usually pretty good, but if you've got the opportunity to use fluid film on a thing like this, then do it. But do it in that order, you know, <laughs> paint it and then put fluid film on. Don't put fluid film on and then paint it, because you'll never get the paint to stick. All right, there's a top tip. Galvanising. Would you galvanise it? I've had a few that's been a bit twisty at the bottom. Uh, Defender bulkheads are notorious for buckling because you see they haven't got these bits on and this bit gives its rigidity if you see what I mean. It's almost like a box section here. So that gives it, it makes it nice and strong. And really with a bit of fluid film and things like this, then you can't go wrong. It, it'll last for donkey's years. It'll see you out anyway. But like I say, protection so once this is painted spray it spray it, spray the outside with the crown or fluid film it'll be good for life i've people have commented that you can buy stainless steel bulkheads great no problem um are they going to fit are they going to go well I, I really don't know somebody said they were about 1500 pounds so that's about for us in canada that'll be about three and a half, four thousand dollars by the time it actually gets here. It's kind of expensive. So fixing them up is kind of, uh, it's practical. And stainless steel, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. It's a bit overkill, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people who make you know, brand new galvanized, chass uh, galvanized bulkheads like Shielder, but I've had a few people again, had a few problems with them. I don't know. Again, I haven't seen them. I haven't fitted them, so I can't really comment on that. But anyway, let's go and have a quick look at the front and see what it's like. Yeah, so it's not too bad. It's these bits I was talking about. They, they came out, they were difficult to grind, and I had them on the frame because I, I had it bolted through these holes here. And I only have a very small, there it is there, it's only a small spacer. In hindsight, I would have made that tube longer and put a bigger block there so I could get access. Well, it's not too bad, it's come out kind of well. Uh, I drilled out these holes here for the throttle uh, linkages, you know, the solid linkages. It had holes in here, 
And I was, you can see there, I was just about to drill that and I thought, well, wait a minute, that's not the holes for the mud shield. The mud shield holes are under here. <laughs> so I didn't do them. I don't know what they're for. And they're only in the top of that one there. But that's it. It's, uh, it's all done. It's all sealed up. Um, this side with the spacer in turned nice. It's well sealed up. I used two and a half cans of gravel guard on that and you can see it's 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 nice and solid it's it's good it won't leak but again once it's painted it wants rust proofing um, yeah so I think you'll be happy with that he needs to bend that tab up that was a little stopper for the bonnet that's that shows it's a two it uh, series two um, he's got a hole here I don't know what that's for maybe a prim primitive hole to get to oil into it or wax you can just to say see the spot wells here I don't know if you can see them uh, this piece is very very strong it's laminated and this is why they rust out because they get humidity and the sweat once the sweat the water runs down and it gets between the laminates and busts all this bit out um, this is why I suggest putting something like fluid film in warm fluid film and fill all this lot up and just then, once it's filled up, put it back on the stand and let it drip out. Put it into a bucket so then you can use it again. Then it'll be good for, for a long, long, long time. Uh, if anybody's wondering what these brackets are for, these were for forward controls. That meant uh, the cab forward design, so this bulkhead would be right at the front of the vehicle and there were some tie bars came down here. But apart from that, no, it's, uh, it's going to be good. Like I said, this bit's all nice, all this is nice. Like there, you can see the spot welds in there, look. You can see the spot welds all round here. It's all laminated up. Right, so I hope you like that. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, just as a finale, as an extra, <laughs> I bought myself a little tool trolley for $40 from Prince's Auto, which has just opened in Sherbrooke. And I thought, that's brilliant, because I can put all my tools in, and when I'm working under a car, I can put all the bits and pieces in the bottom tray, because it's, it's small enough to go under a, under a car. But, these are all the tools I've worked with, and uh, I'm going to go through them, we'll put them on the bench later, and describe everything that we used. That's good, isn't it? So anyway, that's it, so, one bulkhead done. See ya.